This is the famous smart question, very tricky. But before that, let's start with the basics of circular motion. So the first thing is define the radian. What is a radian? You need to know how, why we use radians as angles. So if you draw a sector of a circle like that, this degree can be converted to radian. See the theta there? And it's related to the ratio of the radius and the arc length, also known as displacement. So we can talk about a radian as the angle subtended at the center of a circle. But the language goes that angle subtended at the center by what? We say by an arc, law, by an arc, and the arc refers to this part, you know, the curvy part, okay, by an arc, same length as radius. Ooh, so that means uh, if I say the angle is one radian, okay, you remember this, this old equation S equals to R theta, if I say theta is one radian, that means S and R have exactly the same value, and hence, the ratio is 1. So all these sides are all same length. Quite interesting, huh? Two marks here. One is from you talking about the angle at the center of a circle. Subtender is an optional word sometimes. By an arc length, same length as radius. So the idea of that will be another B1 mark. Independent marks. Okay, let's continue. Now we come to circular motion. A small mass attached to a string and rotating about fixed point at a constant speed. Good to know. So I guess this is a string here. String. Okay, explain what is meant by angular speed about point P of the mass. Angular speed is saying how fast is this thing rotating? Previously we say how fast are you running in a straight line? Meters per second. But here, angular gives you a hint that there's an angle involved. So maybe you started off here but after a certain period of time, the angle increased to that angle and you have gone through a certain distance. Uh, so the way to talk about this one is to say uh, it is a rate of change of angle, also known as d theta dt, or I guess at this level we can still say d delta theta delta t. So rate of change of the angle. But look very carefully. This one can gain us two marks, man. Look at the two marks. Oh. Um, rate of change of what angle? Where's the angle? Who's the angle? How is the angle? So you must say, oh, angle because of this string. This string is changing its angle. So it's rotating about the center. So you say off, or I should say the battle is by the string. So a lot of people miss out the second part. Lah. So this one is going to get you the second mark. Rate of change of angle is the first mark. So M1, A1. If you just say angle of the string, no, no, no. You must say rate of change. Okay, It's increasing over time. In imagine this highlighted part moving. Lah. Now we come to this part. Okay, so this is where you have to apply already. A horizontal flat plate is free to rotate about a vertical axis here. Small mass placed on the plate, distance m. Oh, this is interesting. The speed of rotation is gradually increased from zero until the mass starts to slide. So here your angular velocity is actually increasing. You start off slowly spinning and you get faster and faster and faster and then the thing will fly off. You can try this out at home too. So maximum frictional force is this equation. Okay. Weight is that, distance that. Determine the maximum RPM, revolutions per minute, for mass to remain on the plate. Let's, let's pause a little bit and go back to the picture. Zoom in nice and big. When we have this picture, uh, the question you want to think about is what is keeping that mass rotating in a circular path? The mass wants to go in a straight line. There is a force, a centripetal force. But what contributes to the centripetal force? Think about it. The only force here that points to the center is our good old friction. How do we know? They told us. Ne? Frictional force? I guess it's your big, big F. La. Okay, okay. So if there were no frictional force, if it's perfectly smooth, the mass cannot even rotate in a circle. But because of this F, ah, now you have a frictional force pointing to the center. So this is happening here. Now this is a very important idea because that will help us in this case. So the maximum, this maximum value of this F is already given to us. Any larger than that, mm, frictional force won't be enough to keep the mass on the plate. So with that in mind, let's start by writing it out. 
So we need to explain our working right. So I guess we have to probably say a sentence or two. So maybe I'll say the frictional force frictional force is the centripetal force that allows this object to move in a circular path or circular motion. So Fc equals to Fg. Eh, Fg, ah. no lah, just F lah. F for frictional force. Okay, so let's expand this thing. Uh, centripetal force, what is a way to, exp what's the expression for it? Let's see. We want revolutions per minute, so maybe you want something that has an omega in it. So I will use mr omega square. This is an expression for centripetal force. It goes to frictional force. Ne, given to us now. Okay, so 0 0.72 times W. Don't know what that is. Okay, never mind. We'll figure it out. So let's sub in all the information. We know M is big M. So M. What's the radius? Or D? Oh, distance D. Okay. Let's plug that in, which is 0 0.35. Omega, we are trying to find that. 0 0.72. What is the weight? Mg, right? They didn't give us Mg. Uh. They give us M. Okay, so we just write Mg. M times 9.81. The nice thing is, you can cancel out the Ms. Divide both sides by M, and that is out of the picture. Now we can find what our omega is. After some calculation, I will get that omega should be 4.49 radians per second. Sometimes it is right per second, so it's fine. Okay, what do we want? Ah, they want, oh, they want number of revolutions per minute. So in one minute, how many times have this thing gone round? Ooh. How do we get that from here? This is this is radians per second. We want something where it's revolutions per second. Question mark. Okay, let's think about this carefully. The idea is in one second, you can rotate 4.49 radian. How do I know that? 4.49 radians per second. So in one second, it goes 4.49. But in one minute, that's 60 seconds. So 60 seconds. Okay. 60 seconds, how many radian will it be? This is when you can use a, a, what you call that, a ratio. So let's do some ratio things. I'll break it down into steps. Lah. The mask can use something different, but I thought I want to do this for you. So what is, how, how, may, how, how far did this thing travel in 60 seconds? Let's do a ratio. So we can say, because this is a ratio, right? So 4.49 is here, though. Then this will be 1 over 60. Can you hear that? Oh, sorry, the other way. 60 over 1 second. 60 over 1. But I'm going to shortcut and just multiply both sides by 4.49. So I did a right less working. So I will discover that after 60 seconds, this thing would have rotated a total of about 269.4 radians. And how many revolutions is that? You can do a double ratio law. So one revolution, we say a standard 2 pi radian. That's one whole complete circle 2 pi. So how many, how many, how many cycles is that? So I can say the number of revolutions here then will be 269.4, the total angle, divided by one revolution. And that will give me about 43 radians per minute. Wow, I should also mention this, per minute, per minute. Okay, so the answer is 43 per minute. Okay, if you're if you finding hard to imagine this, think about this. Lah. If you have a, a certain thing and it rotates, zip, 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 one, cycle two, cycle three, cycle four, cycle five, cycle six, many, many signs and uh, cycles and that's what we're looking for. This is five marks, guys. Quite an interesting one. The first one comes from the idea that you know what is the centripetal force. Friction contributes to that. Okay, one mark, give yourself that. Then if you know how to equate them in an equation, okay, what is centripetal force, what's the expression for the frictional force, you get that. If you have your omega angular velocity, you get another one. Now if you do your ratio n equals to something, 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 this part, or the part before, mark scheme does it in one step, but I broke it down into two, you get one more mark. And final answer, one, two, three, four, five, done. 
I kind of block it a little bit, but okay. Last part. This is the one which catches a lot of people as well. The plate is covered with mud. Suggest explain whether the mud near the edge or the center will first leave the plate when the angular speed is slowly increased. So you imagine if we go back to the picture just now, this one, imagine there's lots of masses. Okay, let's modify the picture a little bit. So there's mass over there. Maybe there's another mass over here, maybe nearer to the center. Which one will fly off first? If you can make a guess, you say, man, the, the H1 will fly off first. Yes, but why? You need to be able to explain that. So maybe I'll start off by saying, oh, the H will fly off first. Edge will leave first. But you need to suggest and explain. That explain part is what makes it a little trickier. Think about this. What is keeping these two masses rotating? Frictional force, right? So this frictional force is the same for both of them. The maximum it can go. Lah. So F maximum is the same. Which is 0 0.72 W, yeah. So the biggest it can go is 0 0.72 W. So this is point number one. Point number two. Which one needs a larger centripetal force to move in a circle? Mm. So you think about this. What, what is centripetal force? Ah? There's a few ways you talk about it. Like mv squared over r or mr omega squared. So the further you are away from the center, the larger a centripetal force you need in order to go in a circle. Let me write that out for you. There, this is a good reminder. When r is larger, if you are further away, uh, you will need a larger centripetal force in order to move in a circle. Some may say, miss, but how come f and r here, it says f is inversely proportional to r. But then if you compare with the one on the right, it says f is proportional to r. Huh? So actually, what is the relationship between f and r? Well, in case you didn't know, actually, this V here also has an R inside there. And you sub that in, that's how you get the final formula. So if you want to compare the relationship between the centripetal force needed and how far you are away, which is the radius, best to use the second equation, which is this one over here. Okay. Last thing I will add, when R is larger, a larger centripetal force is needed. This is an important word, needed to keep the mass rotating in a circle. And this is what the mass scheme is talking about, if you looked at it. So, imagine lah, if you are rotating slowly, friction is like, okay lah, friction can keep up. Then you rotate faster, friction is like, eh, can barely keep these guys moving in a circle. Once you go past the maximum, then, cannot really, friction is like, I'm not big enough to keep these masses going in a circle. I cannot keep up. So maybe the frictional force required, say for example, uh, is let's say 18 Newton. Wow, very big. Oh. But the frictional force maximum can only be 15 Newton. So at some point, when you reach 15 Newton, that's it. The mass will fly away. Okay, What is required and what you can actually give. That is how this friction and centripetal force are working together. Okay, So let's we can describe the whole thing. It's a bit long, but you can say the edge will leave first. Because ooh, a larger centripetal force is needed at the edge. So here, important is centripetal force needed uh, to keep the edge, ed, edge mud moving in a circle. Okay, The point is we want it to move in a circle, right? If not, then it'll just fly off in a straight line. Uh. But we want it to move in a circle, okay? Because we don't want it to leave the plate. Okay, this one is a two marks question. Um, The first mark actually is the reason. Yes, the edge will leave first is uh, A1 mark. But in order to get this A1 mark, you need to suggest, uh, you need to explain properly. Lah. So a larger centripetal force is needed to keep the edge moving in a circle. That is a possible example of how you can get your method mark in order to get the A1 mark for this. So yeah, that is all for this question. Think about centripetal force required. This skill of explaining applies to all kinds of past year questions where they're asking you about things flying off the plate or things flying off the circular path, escape velocity and things like that. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're trying to explain things like this. Hopefully that was helpful. 
Uh, that's all for this question. I will see you in the next one.